Hi, Bloody Recapped here. Today we talk about horror thriller 2017 year. News. Keep your eyes open and stay focused. The City of Dublin, literature professor Samuel Solomon, gives a lecture and assigns homework for everyone to write an alternative to Dante Alighieri's Inferno and concludes the lecture. While Samuel is signing autographs for the girls, Susan approaches who invites him to tonight's professor's dinner, but he has to decline. He has things to do at home. When he gets to the car, Beatrice appears and asks for a ride home, but apparently Samuel has the wrong route and takes her to his bed. It turns out they've been together for 13 months, but no one at the university knows about it. She asks if he loves her and he promises he will love her forever. And while he discovers he's running out of cat food, he goes to the bathroom to tell her about the starving cat, but sees a razor bladeless tool in the sink, and in the bathroom Beatrice finds herself in her own blood with a cut on her arm. He pulls her out of the tub and by bandaging her arm tries to resuscitate her, but unfortunately she passes away. The woman tries to hide in the mansion from the men in black robes, but coming to a standstill they sit her on her knees, smear black ointment on her and cut her throat with the claw of the beast. It turns out to be Samuel's dream. A year has passed since Beatrice's death. Samuel is addicted to pills. The days pass monotonously, but several nights in a row he dreams of some sectarians killing the girl in the mansion. He can no longer drink any more and decides to come to the university, where they ask Susan if the year-long dinner offer is still on. She replies that it is. Samuel tells him that he has been having the same dream for three weeks. Every night, he has seen a therapist, but it is not his. Susan suggests he take his mind off Beatrice's death and write a book on his dream, and gives him a fountain pen for his past birthday, offering to write his shopping lists if he doesn't want to write a horror story about his dream. When he gets home he decides to try to write something, but Susan calls him and asks him to turn on the state news, and they show the mansion from Samuel's dream in which the girl on the first floor was murdered and apparently it was a ritual straight from his dream. The next day at the cafe he claims to Susan that it was this girl named Lydia Garethi that he saw in his dreams. She calls it a prophetic dream and suggests that Samuel personally investigate the case without reporting it to the police because if he comes forward and says he dreamt it all, everyone knows how it will end. He arrives at the edge of town and enters the grounds of the mansion through the forbidding police tape. We see the two-story mansion from the dream in real life, but the door turns out to be locked and boarded up, but behind it a basement door turns up open. He enters the house and sees the very staircase the woman was running up. He ascends to the first floor and in the study where the woman was looking for something in the shelf, he finds an old photo with a caption on the back, a white circle from 1968, and takes it with him. Suddenly a girl enters the office and starts to run away. When Samuel catches up with her she begs him not to kill her. Her name is Rachel. She too had a dream about Lydia being killed and asks to go after her. She is something else. They come to an evil circle, where Samuel remembers that instead of shelves, there should have been a door in that place. They remove the shelves, tear down the wallpaper and open the door. There are stairs to the top and they go up to the attic, where there is an aquarium. In it, Samuel finds an egg with Dante written on it. Rachel thinks it was Lydia who wanted them to find the egg if she showed it to them in her dreams. At the window they see the police, and a resident of the house next door who tells them he saw a man and a woman entering the mansion. They escape from the house and make their way under a net into the woods, but when Samuel stops to run he realizes that Rachel is missing. It turns out she works at a club as a dancer and has a son, and while she's looking at the egg at home, Samuel tries to find information about the white circle. There's nothing useful on the internet, but he notices the Golden Judas College inscription on the picture. He seeks Susan's advice and she tells him that the white circle was an experimental literary circle that met at that college, and he talks about the Sonata of Shakespeare, which he says the muse dictated to him in a dream, the sonata no one can decipher, not even Shakespeare himself. Every member of the white circle claimed that the muse had come to him. The book says the first muse will call you, the second will bewitch you, the third will lie, the fourth will punish you, the fifth will predict everything the sixth will seduce you and the seventh will flee. But the fellows went too far and started to assert in all magazines that incomprehensible evil lives in people, and published photos of mutilated people performed rituals on, 
Samuel asks to find the very guys and Rachel is still trying to study the strange egg and she has a vision of a woman giving birth and the egg begins to spin. Suddenly her son walks in, to whom she promises that this was the last night at the club and begins to spoil her son. Susan found five members of the white circle, Lee Barlow, stabbed himself six years ago, 28 times to be exact, in front of his entire family. Matthew Osman, died of a disease that rots tissue until the victim dies. Doctors still don't know what it is. Barry Satan, he was eaten from the inside out by an unidentified insect in the docks. But there is a detail, a Baudelaire quote was found carved into his body with a knife. Lawrence Colbert went mad and stabbed some kids at the school gate. He was shot by the cops and also had poetry tattoos on his back. That leaves Herbert Roshan, but no information on him. It turns out Rachel owes the club and danced just for this. She pays back the whole debt, but the boss replies that he can't, because those he sold her to are serious uncles, and employees obviously don't want to lose. He pins her down and asks her not to be late again. He raises her debt to keep working for them. Samuel finds records of a sunken yacht with Herbert Roshan, but his body has never been found. He is about to go to the university and find a connection to him. Susan promises to help, and Rachel goes back to the club. Samuel puts the cat to eat, but this time he doesn't come and a cockroach crawls out of the plate. Behind the girl comes out of the bathroom. She tells them that she got into the house through a pipe. She says that now they need the amaco, what he took from the aquarium, because it belongs to them, because if he took it out of the water, he has to give it back. Those are the rules. He asks her to get out of his house and she drops the dead cat. As he heads towards her, she smothers him with the power of her mind and cuts her palm open, setting conditions for him to return the Amako by midnight tomorrow, 40 kilometers on the road north to Joy Hill, and for him to be alone. Rachel sees the boss leave and heads for his office. She quickly breaks down the door and takes her papers and quietly walks out. Samuel wakes up in the morning when Susan knocks on his door. He quickly throws the cat out and bandages his arm. And while Susan tells him the address where Herbert was last, he treats his arm and says he will go alone, for all who go near it are killed. He arrives at the address and asks for Professor Herbert, but the governess says he is dead. Then Samuel says he is about the white circle and the man closes the doors. Samuel waits outside and is called by the governess. He brings him into Herbert's office. He wants to show Samuel something. For a demonstration he puts the fish on the table and wants to show the naturalness of the muse. Lydia recorded him a few years ago, a recording after which he says that Lydia is the muse who predicts. Suddenly the dead fish comes to life, and Herbert packs it in and says that muses enter our world through poetry, because that is the only way they can penetrate human nature through beauty. He shows the scratched inscription on his hand and says it killed his three children, his friends, his wife, everyone he loved. He asks Samuel to give them what they want from him, but when he says he doesn't have it, he tells him to run away. At home, Samuel packs a box of matches that Rachel gave him at the mansion and the address of the club is in it, and Rachel tries to pack quickly and asks her son to do the same. They are leaving right away. Samuel arrives at the club and asks the men for help to find the girl, but he is immediately made to understand that he is not welcome here. On his way out, he sees the girl go in the other passage and follows her. He tells what she looks like and the girl says it's Rachel, wondering how she manages to drive men so crazy. But after explaining it, she realizes she's been burning her ears off about Samuel and names the house where Rachel lives. She doesn't know the flat. Rachel hurries to pack her things and Samuel is on his way to her. But as she is about to leave the flat, her boss walks in the door and tells her that he hasn't found her passport since this morning. She asks her son to run to the bedroom and the guy starts beating on Rachel while Samuel is outside finding out from the guys where Rachel lives. He even pays them to find out her flat. While he drowns her in the sink, Samuel goes up to her floor and she has a vision of an egg and gets a screwdriver from the shelf and stabs him in the leg. He lets her go and gets punched in the neck, and Samuel knocks on her door. She says he wanted to kill them and asks her to save them. They arrive at the motel. Rachel happily observes her son interacting with Samuel and goes out to put him to bed, while Samuel examines the egg. Rachel arrives and thanks him for saving her, but Samuel admits that he only came for the egg because it needs to be returned. 
keeping quiet about the girl who came to him that night. Samuel leaves and asks her to stay and not open it to anyone. Garbert opens the letter and calls Samuel explaining that two months ago, Lydia sent him a letter, but he didn't understand the message. She probably knew that Samuel was coming to him and the letter was addressed to Samuel. But we hear the door open and a voice greeting the professor. And Samuel arrives at the place the girl told him. There he is met by a man with an umbrella and escorts him to the girl, who sits down at a table next to a woman who calls herself the one who bewitches him. He takes out an egg and makes a condition that he will give it to them if they don't touch the girl. He gives the egg and the woman bursts it saying it is a shell and not an amako. He's tricked them and he shouldn't have trusted Rachel and the girl starts casting a spell around Samuel. His nose and wound begin to bleed and the woman asks him to bring a mako and this time no mercy is expected. There is a knock on Rachel's room at night. It turns out to be Lydia, who convinces Rachel that she will soon remember everything, because she is special. But Rachel gets a crack at her and it turns out she's the one who's lying. At this point Susan checks the poetry inspiration book, but it only turns out to contain six muses, seven are missing. The professor is tied to the bed and the girl rolls up her tools and closes the doors. It turns out to be the one who punishes. She says he should have kept it, because after all these years he should have realized that. She promises him he'll live for a couple of hours. As the poem is very short, they don't want him to miss anything. Meanwhile Susan finds six muses in all the books. One of them appears behind her. Samuel arrives at Rachel and she tells her that her son has been taken away and that she has remembered everything. She is not like the others. Here is her imago. It is her memory, her power. And without her she's just a piece of flesh. They hate anything that looks like humans, because they're incapable of it themselves. She was the only muse who could love, that's why they banished her. They had a rule book that said you couldn't have children, which she broke. They could have let her die a human death, but they just sold her to that creep. Lydia found and gave her back Imago. Apparently the others somehow found out about it and killed her. She shows Samuel the healing ability and tells him she is the one who seduces him by giving him the Imago and asks him to give it back saying they won. It turns out there is a seventh lurking muse, the cruelest and weakest, for if she dies, the others die too, no one even knows what she is. He remembers the letter from Herbert and they head to it. The house lights are on and Samuel asks Rachel to stay in the car. The door of the house is open and there is music coming from the first floor. He goes up and into the dark room where the radio is playing. He sees a bloody sheet on the professor, and when he takes it off he sees a cut up body and cockroaches climbing out of it. He begs to be taken away and runs into the office to collect a letter, but in the corridor he is attacked by a governess who is on the verge of killing Samuel, but Rachel appears and kills him with a verse. In the car Rachel finds the key and reads the verse. Samuel doesn't know what it means but knows someone who does. He arrives at Susan's house but the door is also open. On the first floor Susan is biting her nails until she bleeds and when Samuel rolls her up and holds her arms, Rachel sees her chest and explains that she will devour herself to death. He asks her to find a knife. Support the channel cut by the writing off her chest. Like and Rachel brings the knife, but when he picks it up he hesitates to do it, asks to bring something to tie her up. They tie her up and put her on the bed. Rachel asks to find out what the verse means, as the muse is their son. She needs help now. She goes to call an ambulance and Samuel reads her the verse, but all she says is the title behind the curtain. Rachel realizes they need to go to the address from the letter, to the psychiatric hospital, room 1007, but first they have to wait for an ambulance for Susan, Rachel will wait outside. But as Samuel talks to Susan, Rachel comes in and says she can help her and asks to be left alone. He goes downstairs and waits, as he suddenly notices Rachel by the car, and rushing over to Susan, the one who is lying comes down the stairs. She asks him not to go upstairs, as he won't like it. He gets up and screams at what he sees and Rachel covers his eyes. They arrive at the hospital, Rachel says the vault is there, they need to be ready. And it's important to know that if the hiding muse dies Rachel will also die, but her son will live. They arrive at the room with I promise to love you forever scrawled on the refrigerator door. Samuel realizes these are his words to Beatrice and opens the fridge. He sees his reflection there. Rachel realizes that Samuel is the vault. 
she explains to him that Beatrice met him on purpose and fell in love with him and left her life to hide in it. She can only help by finding out their whole story. The muses enter the building saying it will be a most unfortunate ending. Rachel in the room realizes it will all happen here and makes a white circle out of handicrafts. There is only one way out, inflict wounds on herself. As soon as she feels the vault is in danger she will leave and she needs to be trapped in the white circle and killed. There is no other way. Samuel says he doesn't want to lose Rachel, but she slits his wrists and dips them in the water and warns him that she's on her way. Samuel passes out and Beatrice emerges from the water. She wants to escape but Rachel pulls her into the circle and rushes to Samuel to bandage his arm. She enlivens Samuel with a line of verse and the muses on the corridor say they are starting. Samuel approaches Beatrice and she tries to insinuate that she loves him. But he says to himself that she is not real. Rachel also tries to convince him to kill her. But the muses burst into the room. They ask him to let the hiding muse go or they will kill her son. They want to take the Amago. Rachel replies that Samuel would never give it up. But the muse thinks he has no choice. Samuel grabs Beatrice showing his intentions. But the muses won't back down. Causing Rachel to ask him to kill Beatrice right now. Which he does and all the muses fall to the floor and Rachel hugs her son one last time. And we are shown how Samuel has started writing again, has gone to lecture at the university and taken the boy with him, and outside Susan's house people pay their respects to her. He will still try to find a way to win her back. And the film ends with the phrase that poetry is capable of incredible things. Support the channel by subscribing, like and on notifications, because with it you will be the first to know about the video. Thank you for watching.